Hello and welcome to Demian Allen's Paranormal World. Uh, welcome to the show. We'll be investigating uh, paranormal history, uh, activities and the people associated uh, with these particular cases. Now, my first guest I'm very, very pleased to have on the show uh, simply because um, of the work he has done in the past as a psychic investigator and particularly um, his uh, um, his way that he is involved in a particular case called the Highgate Vampire uh, from the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, so I'd like to welcome to the show uh, Mr. David Farrant. Welcome, David. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start about talking to you about, you're a psychic investigator. <coughs> yes. That's I mean. what you do. <coughs> yes. And you've done that for a number of years now. A great many years, yes. In I'm fact, as far back as I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long time. Well, how did you get involved in the occult? The occult, um, I guess it's all part of the same thing, really. I mean, they're linked, they're related, in, in a way. I actually became first involved in the occult. I think it was the influence of my mother. Yes. Um, she was involved, very deeply involved in spiritualism. Now, she used to attend a spiritualist church, I believe it was in Kentish Town. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there, but I know she used to go. I do remember that it used to cause quite a conflict between her and my father. I, I should point out quickly, my father was a very down-to-earth materialistic man. So the, uh, the spiritualism wouldn't have gone down too it well? Didn't. Um, he was a very good man. I mean, he wanted the best for, for myself, good education, good career, and all that sort of thing. Mm. And I sort of rejected it because I, I was more interested in the non-material things. If you like the spiritual side of life, I was very, very young, but even at a very early age, I, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, mm. eleven, I remember my father and mother having quite heated discussions because mm. she used to come in late at night after having attended the spiritual church. Maybe she'd go to people's houses afterwards and they'd have coffee or something. And he just, he just didn't approve of it. Um, and it's the sort of thing when you're at a very young age and impressionable, it's the sort of thing you remember. Yeah. But what I was trying to make, the point I was trying to make is, my interest obviously came from her. Mm. Um, I was born in a large old Victorian house in Highgate. Highgate in London. Highgate in London, yeah, North London. And funnily enough, well not really funnily, but it was actually haunted. So that also helped towards my interest. So you've got the spiritualism of your you've got the haunted, haunted house. house. Uh, yes, that's right. <clears throat> there was a particular malevolent, male, malevolent figure there, mm. which I didn't see often, but when I did, it really used to terrify me because it used to walk across the room in the lounge, a big old room, and it would just disappear to a wall the outside of the room. Yeah. And funnily enough, I slept alone in this room. Mm. And I do remember on quite a few occasions, I would always wake up. If I was asleep, I'd wake up seconds before this figure came. Yeah. And after a time, it didn't happen that often, but I realized the minute I woke up, that the figure was going to come out of the wall, and it did. There was a kind of a, a sort of a knowing, almost a link of knowing when this figure would sort of, and this is very much an unconscious level of knowing when this figure would appear. Yes, but it's almost, you know, it's almost as if this figure, whatever it was, wanted me to wake up, and it was telling yeah. me to wake up. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly, and of course, after it happened the first time, it was quite terrifying. It, ha it must have happened over my life in about three or four times 
over a course of years. Yeah. And of course, the next time I woke up, I was expecting it, which was even more frightening. Yes. But my mother used to um, obviously tell my father about this. He didn't believe it. At least he, he did believe me. He, he just thought I was having a, a bad dream. Yeah. But she explained it differently. She said that these things can't actually harm you. Mm. And, you know, she explained so much to me, t to me when I was very, very young mm. about, not only about uh, so-called supernatural entities, she, through her spiritualism and the people she used to associate with, she knew a lot about the powers in nature. Um, mm. She really did. I mean, I, I remember one occasion I burnt my finger at school, mm. scolded it in the kitchen carrying something really. And in those days, what they used to do, <coughs> common belief was that you put butter on it, yeah. and you bound it up with bandages and plaster, and the pain was excru excruciating. But of course I couldn't take it off, because the matron had put it there, and I, here I was with this really painful finger. And I came back from school, and my mother went absolutely mad. Mm. She ripped the, the bandage off. She got a, a glass of ice water. Yeah. Put it, and she said, she said to me, "Hold your finger in that, and keep it there for 20 minutes, half an hour." Yeah. I did exactly that, and do you know? After that time, the pain almost went, mm. and and my finger healed up within a matter of days. Yeah. She understood that, and. Do you know, it's only years, years later, and it wasn't that so long ago, I learned that the way they treat third degree burns now, if they're very, very serious, mm. is they submerge a patient in baths of cold water. But she knew that instinctively, yeah. and she didn't have all this old wives' tale to put butter on your finger. Yeah. I'm only giving you that as an illustration, as an example. If I really came under her influence. You've got this, yeah, you've got this sort of potent mix, really, haven't you? Of spiritualism, of her interest in nature, the other world, being brought up in a place that's haunted. Yeah. Um, and your father's reaction yeah. against this. And just kind of looking at the, um, the, the broader picture, growing up in, in that environment, and then coming into sort of you know, late teens and early twenties, and um, I know that you got a, an int well had an interest and got involved in the Wicca tradition. Yes, that's right. And was do you think that was because of the your mother's influence, or was that because of a particular time in your life where you needed some guidance or needed um, to understand perhaps some of your childhood or understand that particular time and period that you were going through in your late teens, early twenties? I should explain something first, that when I was only 13 years old, mm. my mother died. Um, and I really felt as if I'd lost a part of my life. Mm. I, I refused, after she died, I refused to learn anything at school. I just refused to take anything in. I hated it, and I even ran away from a couple of schools. Yeah trying to get home because I wanted to be back in the house, mm. even, even if she wasn't there. And I left school actually when I was 15. Yeah. Oh, come on, I better be honest. I got expelled from school when I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's, you know, I put that in my book, so anyone, <coughs> anyone that's read that will think, why am I I'm not submitting it? Yeah. But I got expelled from school very quickly for refusing to get my hair cut. I was rebelling from that very early age. Mm. You've got to remember in those days, everybody had short back short. and sides. Yeah. And if your hair even started to come over your collar, let alone have sideboards, you were in trouble. Yeah. Everybody stare at you in the street. And all this was about two years before the Rolling Stones even came on. So. Yeah. Anyway, <coughs> I did get expelled from school when I was 15. <clears throat> from my 
bad influence. It wasn't really a bad influence. I, I, I was just rebelling against m material learning. Mm. When I left school, I travelled around Europe for the best part of a year, 18 months. <coughs> and when I returned to London eventually, I started to look up associates of my mother yeah. who were involved in the spiritualist church. And from there I, <coughs> excuse me, from there I got introduced to a lady who lived in Barnet whose name was Helen. Mm. Now Helen, as well as being a spiritualist, spiritualist she was involved in Wicca. Right. And over the course, this was in late 63, and over the course of three years, I learned most of what I know about Wicca through her. And I actually, she actually initiated me into the, into the Wiccan religion, faith, belief. What was that like for, for you? Was it to come in of a, an understanding of perhaps you as a person? Did you feel that suddenly things started to make sense yes. in your world? Yeah, started to make sense, and I also felt more than that. I felt as if I was fulfilling something. Yes, part of my desti part of my destiny. Because Wicca, as you probably know, many people know it. Oh, and many people don't know. I mean, obviously, there are people around today in their ignorance who actually think Wicca is all to do with Satanism and black magic. That's it's right, nothing yes. to do with it at all. It's, well, for the sake of the uninitiated, it's a religion based on understanding the powers in nature. Yeah. And not only in nature, but in the cosmos, in the universe, and powers within ourselves. Yeah. And how we relate to these powers in nature. And it teaches more than that. It teaches you how to utilize these powers and use them for, well, for good, mm. never for harm, <coughs> as I just said to you. Yeah. Uh, it, it's used to heal, to help people, to guide people, and in doing that, actually, you further your own knowledge and understanding of it. Mm. And so I actually became initiated into Wicca. We're talking about 1965. Okay. So this gave you, um, this opened up a, a whole load of doors, I, w I should imagine, into that world and the people that associated with it. Yes, yes, yes. I completely changed my uh, circle of friends. I felt as if I was mixing with people I should be with, who understood me, really. Mm. And I, I really progressed from there. Of course, I learned all about all the rituals. Yeah. Of course, all the symbolism in Wicca, about the symbolism of the solar god, the male god, yeah. the male deity. But the main difference in Wicca is that they also acknowledge the existence of a uh, a goddess. Yes. They don't really believe in a male and a female, but they believe there's only one deity which is both male and female. Mm. <coughs> and she's represented, she goes under many different names by Cellini, and she's represented by the moon. Yeah. This is why in Wicca, great emphasis, of great importance rather, is put on the phases of the moon. Mm. And that is why the ceremony is sometimes, well, maybe not in the winter, but in the summer, take place at night. Yes. Because they believe in the influence and the power of the moon. Part of the same thing, really. I mean, they're linked, they're related, I in a way. I actually became first involved in the occult. I think it was the influence of my mother. Yes. Um, she was involved very deeply involved in spiritualism. She used to attend a spiritualist church, I believe, 
in the past as a psychic investigator and particularly um, his, uh, um, his way that he is involved in a particular case called the Highgate Vampire uh, from the late 60s and early 70s. So I'd like to welcome to the show uh, Mr. David Farrant. Welcome, David. Thank you. Um, hello, and welcome to Demian Allen's Paranormal World. Uh, welcome to the show. We'll be investigating uh, paranormal history, uh, activities, and the people associated uh, with these particular cases. Now, my first guest I'm very, very pleased to have on the show, uh, simply because um, of the work he has done. I wanted to start about talking to you about, you're a psychic investigator. Yes. That's what you do. Yes. And you've done that for a number of years now. A great many years, yes. In I fact, as far back as I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. Well, how did you get involved in the occult? The occult, um, I guess it's all part of it in Kentish Town. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there, but I know she used to go. I do remember that it used to cause quite a conflict between her and my father. I, I should point out quickly, my father was a very down-to-earth materialistic man. So the, uh, the spiritualism wouldn't have gone down too it well? It didn't. Um, he was a very good man. I mean, he wanted the best for 